of Tinmal. Please join me in uh, welcoming the prolific Aga Khan Fellow, uh, Professor Susanna Calvo Capilla, uh, who will present tonight's lecture on Islamic Architecture for Wisdom, Looking Back on the Classical Legacy. Thank you. Um, thank you, Professor Nechipolo, for the kind introduction. Uh, I would like to thank the AHAM program uh, and the Harvard Department of History of Art uh, for the invitation to participate in this program, and especially Professors Nechipolo and Rosberg. Uh, it's an honor for me to be here. Um, in 1254, a Jewish scholar who worked in the service of King Alfonso X the, the Wise began his translation into Spanish of the Libro Completo de los Juicios, a complete book on the judgment that through the stars, written in Arabic two centuries later, earlier, uh, with these words Amador de la verdad, escodriñador de ciencias, requeridor de doctrinas y de enseñamientos que ama y alega así los sabios en los que se entremeten de saberes y les face algo a merced, etc. With almost identical words, the Toledan scholar Ibn Said al tulaituli uh, in the 11th century, described the Cordovan caliph al-Hakam II, as well as the geographer al Idrisi and the Valencian traveler Ibn Juvair, Described, the, described Roger II and William II, both Norman kings of Sicily in the 12th century. They were polymath sovereigns, as were also Emperor Frederick II, who commissioned Michael Scotus to translate works of Aristotle from Arabic into Latin, and his contemporary, uh, Maml the Mamluk Sultan al Sahib by Bars, whose name is accompanied in the inscriptions with the epithet al-Alim al -Alim, and on occasion Iskandar al-Saman, a title already used in Hellenistic and Roman antiquity. These rulers knew that surrounding themselves with intellectuals and promoting the sciences and the arts was an inexcusable component of their royal dignity and a necessary a uh, necessary instrument to build their legitimacy among the kingdoms of the Mediterranean. In those kingdoms, the prestige of the sovereigns was largely, largely due since antiquity to the number of scholars in their service and the volumes kept in their libraries, as well as to the emergence of a body of knowledge of their own based on the assimilation of the heritage of the ancients. Hence, this is how they were described in text and how they were represented in books. The copying of ancient manuscripts throughout the first centuries of Islam allowed the survival and assimilation of images of pagan Greco-Latin culture, images of philosophers and sages, Aristotle, Galen, Ptolemy, as well as, the, as personifications of the stars or portraits of great sovereigns and heroes of antiquity, like Alexander the Great, Salomon, Heracles, or Khosroes. The Arab scholar translated, studied, and practiced the science of the, the, science of the ancients, which allowed them to familiarize themselves with those classical representations of the books. The first illustrated books have not been preserved, but they may have included uh, illustrations as in the well-known manuscripts of 12th and 13th centuries of Arab Dioscorides, the Materia Medica, or the astronomy books like the, that of Al-Sufi, or the frontispiece here in the, uh, of the Rasail Ihwan Safa, the epistles of Brothers of Purity. Although they were made in the visual language 
of the time, the inspiration for these images must be sought, as previously indicated by Eva Hoffman, in the miniatures uh, of the late antique scientific manuscripts that circulated in the libraries of the Islamic world, such as the magnificent Dioscorites of Vienna. Uh, we remember that one of these uh, uh, manuscripts of the uh, Materia Medica arrived in Cordoba in the 10th century as a gift from the uh, Byzantine uh, emperor. The meetings of wise men with different attire and settings also appear in the Norman manuscripts of Sicily or in the works of Alphonse, uh, Alphonso X, for example, in the Lapidario, the book, the book of Stones and Minerals, the king handed over Aristotle the preeminent place of the composition, because the king is below him, below the philosopher. And one last image, the wise men and the wise king portrayed in animated discussion in the Alhambra in Granada in the mid 14th century. Moreover, it is very likely that they were familiar with some of the antique buildings and institutions still standing around the Mediterranean, where teaching, intellectual and scientific, scientific activities had taken place. We have an example in, in Egypt, in Alexandria, in Comaldica, where archaeologists have discovered in the last decade uh, the, the auditoria of the last academy opened in the city, um, probably until the beginning of the 8th century. But there were other places in the Near East, such as, such as the Academy of Aphrodisias, and certainly in Persia, judging by the remains of the Hellenistic period of Ahai Hanun in Afghanistan, where a gymnasium was erected, or those of the Sassanid kingdom. Some of them had galleries of statues, busts, and tondi, or tondi, representing philosophers, as here in Aphrodisians, in Anatolia, or in Memphis, uh, in the Serapeum, the, the, the Memphis in Egypt. Or also in the Iberian Peninsula, for example, this head of an ermine of Alexander the Great uh, was found in a late Roman bill in Seville, but also in, this, uh, in the remains of the necropolises in Cordoba, we have found some sarcophagi as this one. There are common features among these multi multifunctional spaces dedicated to store books, to teaching or to study antiquity, such as the auditoria, but there is also a variety of typologies and in fact, the identification of some, some of, the, of those antique great centers of knowledge was at some point controversial. For example, at one moment uh, with the Templum Pacis in Rome or the Hadrian Library in Athens. As happens with late antique, as also happened with late antique and early Umayyad buildings, such as the, as the palace of Herbat al mabshar which Bath has a typology derived from the Roman Thermae, uh, and which Alejandro Scatescu has identified as a library and meeting place. Even in late medieval and modern palaces, we cannot find a distinct and recognizable architectonical typology, as in the case of the Topkapi Palace or the Alhambra Library, all the cupboards and bookshelves are similar in, in all of them, and also we can find this kind of bookshelves in the uh, Marinid Madrasas and the Mamluk Madrasas. Uh, in recent years, new transdisciplinary scholarship in the fields of science and art have, uh, have led us to explore a subject that had been rarely visited in the past when analyzing the history of, and the, of the art and, and culture of uh, Al-Andalus. That is, the artistic impact of the, in, of the intense cultural and scientific change between Al-Andalus and the rest of the Islamic Mediterranean, especially Egypt and the Near East, and its relation with ruling dynasties.
the interactions of scholars and artists, of books and scientific objects, had become part of a shared discourse of sovereignty, who, but not many studies had deepened until now in the consequences of this shared world in art and architecture. Nevertheless, the virtues of patronage of the arts and sciences in a ruler are frequently highlighted in the mirror of princes, uh, literature, and other textual sources. Recent studies on the survival of late antiquity models of teaching and academic institutions in the Near East, on the development of Arabic textual culture and education, for example, in the works of Hitler, in addition to an improving knowledge of the stand buildings and scientific instruments, as Sandial Sastroleif, uh, studied in Spain, for example, uh, by Samso or Susan Hernandez, encouraged me to study the architectural settings for those learning and scientific activities with which the princes surrounded themselves. Court schools and madrasas, archives, libraries and scriptoria, majalis, astronomical observatories and scientific instrument workshops, and so on, are institutions and places mentioned in Arabic sources, but they are still little known from the material point of view. The first buildings housing these uh, uh, scientific, those scientific activities, often known as House of, of Wisdom, Beit al-Hikmah, have disappeared or have left meager material traces. Furthermore, the absence of defined typologies and, multifunction, and the multifunction of the Palatine spaces until at least the 12th century compel us to use other types of evidence from the planimetries to, and the analyse, analysis of the architectural forms to the inscriptions, in case they exist, the material and decorative remains, as well as the location of the building, the building in, uh, within the palace complex, and of course, the, co the cultural complex, the context, sorry. Lastly, an orientalist bias, suggesting hedonistic function for undefined palatial, palatial complex, complexes had long dominated studies on the interpretation of secular Islamic architecture especially in the Iberian Peninsula, as could be noted in studies on the uses and functions of the Alhambra, al Jafariya de Zaragoza, the ruins of the Umayyad Madinat al-Sahra uh, uh, in Al-Andalus, but also outside Al-Andalus, for example, in the Sisa Palace, Palace in Palermo in Sicily. In 2018, the World Heritage Committee inscribed the Caliphate city of Medina Zahara uh, on the World Heritage List. Nine years before, the museum was opened. But until nowadays, the famous library of Al Hakam II, as well as the role of science in Al Andalus, whose legacy is nevertheless recognized as one of the contributions of Islam to universal culture, are still not part of the explanations of the site. None of the Roman uh, sculptures and sarcophagi found in the ruins of, the Madinat, of Madinat el Sahra are visible in the museum. They are kept in a storage. The same could be said of the Alhambra, where romantic and orientalist, uh, orientalist uh, stories about the sensual lifestyle of the Muslims are still part of their popular attraction. No information, no information is available about the Nazareth Library, although it's known that Cisneros, the first bishop of Granada, uh, uh, is responsible for decimate, decimating it and burning part of the, uh, its books. So we went back. Um, some questions arise when we see these uh, monuments on, uh, or this uh, archaeological site. What is supposed to be an Islamic palace? What pieces are used to explain what, caliphal, what the Caliphal court of Cordoba was like? What story is offered to general visitors or tourists? Uh, art historians, in the case of Al-Andalus, but also in the Christian kingdoms, 
must encourage more inclusive and diverse approaches that consider aspects such as the role of science and knowledge in art and architecture, the court culture in Islamic world as defined by Norbert Elias and others uh, after, we, after him, uh, the Mediterranean exchange networks, as well as the survival or recovery of Greek or Latin culture in Islamic art. My first approach to the subject was the case of the Umayyad court of Cordoba in, ten, in the 10th century. In fact, I am currently, I am currently working on a book where I will focus on al Hakam II and his role in the two great artistic undertakings of the Umayyad Caliphate of Al-Andalus. First, in the planning and construction of the Palatine city of Madinat al-Sahra with his father, Abderrahman III, between 900, uh, 936 and 976 and then in the enlargement of the Great Mosque of Cordoba. Both are large, largely attribute, attributable to the patronage of al hakam II, first as a prince, and then from 961 as, a, as caliph. And both constituted a perfect visual representation of Umayyad ideology, as well as the most powerful instruments of legitimation of the caliphal title assumed in 929. They marked one of the greatest periods of creativity and wealth in the art of Iberian Peninsula. Al-Hakam was also the one responsible for the intellectual and political religious discourse of the caliphate, and therefore for the true consolidation of the new dignity. Along with the great mosque of the capital, the second grand legacy of Al-Hakam was the great library of Cordoba, a site for the promotion of knowledge and sciences probably located in, royal, in the royal palaces of Cordoba. It is also important to mention that their artistic and cultural projects were not a mere replica to counteract the patterns for the rival, of, their, of their rivals, political rivals, mainly the Fatimid Caliphs. On the contrary, the Cordoban Umayyad Caliphate needed and created its own corpus of knowledge, as pointed out by Portavilces, Frank, Connie, etc., and royal models of legitimation and reaffirmation, both formal and iconographic. The prestige derived from the Hispanic and pre-Islamic heritage, Roman and hispano visigothic played an important role in that original ideology. All this seems to prove that the Caliphate had a clearly universal ambition. The urban structure of Medina del Sahra was adapted to the hillside of the mountains of Cordoba, Sierra Morena, and the different buildings were distributed hierarchically on step terraces following probably the Abbasid model. Luxury materials such as white and violet limestone, marble, alabaster, and bricks uh, are used, were used in its construction. construction. A new palace for the caliph was built on the highest uh, area. And in recent excavations carried out around the terrace and east portico of entrance, have identified one of the caliphal public settings, a pavilion above the portico probably used as a balcony of appearances. Reception halls, residential units, gardens, a congregational mosque, as well as spaces destined to administration, the army, and neighborhoods uh, constituted the royal city. And of course, spaces of knowledge, usually ignored. The palace incorporated other features inspired by antique elements. On the one hand, the, the recovery of the basilical plan typology for the ceremonial halls, and on the other, the reutilization of Roman sculptural materials, uh, such as statues and sarcophagi, uh, that we see uh, later. The so-called Great Hall, with a large central bay, was probably covered by a dome. 
maybe the first experiment or practice for the construction of the ribbed domes in the Great Mosque. Uh, we must remember at the point with these images that uh, hardly any traces of the roofs or the upper parts of the buildings um, of the Caliphal city have been preserved. We don't know how uh, they were. But the revival of classical forms in, class in caliphal architecture can also be seen in construction details like the classical cornice crowning the circle of the mihrab of Cordoba or the capitals used in the mosque and all, in, in other places um, or, for example, this uh, caliphal basin uh, found in the Alcazaba de Almería that is inspired by the, uh, um, the, the sarcophagi reused uh, in the palace. As we mentioned before, we currently hold much information about the scientific and intellectual activities carried out in the court of the caliphs in Cordoba. Bio bibliographical dictionaries, for example, often stated that the caliph used to summon the court the Andalusi wise men and the foreigners who arrived in the ports of Al Andalus. In the palace, the wise men, a lot of them devoted to the sciences of, uh, ancients, of the ancients, that is non Islamic, such as astronomy, medicine, philosophy, could practice their science and write books, which will subsequently enrich the library of Al Hakam II. A good example of the importance of his sponsorship is the first school of astronomy and mathematics that, has, uh, that was established in Cordoba under the leadership of the astronomer and mathematician Maslama al Mashriti. Uh, that institution marked the beginning, the beginning of organized uh, scientific research in Al Andalus. An Andalusian treatise on the construction of astrolabes was probably copied in Christian lands at the, at the end of the 10th century. We see here one of the pages. And thanks to this copy of this manuscript, we know the oldest of the astrolabes made in Al Andalus, most probably in Cordoba. Um, that's why Al Makari described Al Hakam as a lover of science who gathered more books than any other sovereign. He sent his emissaries to Baghdad to look for originals and copies and paid generous amounts of gold and dinars. In his library, he gathered experts in transcription and copying of books, skilled in preservation and bookbinding, in addition to correctors and illuminators. Even Said al Andalusi praised Al Hakam for, for his exaggerated interest in science and for his libraries, and com compared him to the Abbasid Caliphs. We knew, we knew the names given to those libraries uh, and scientific institutions, such as Al Hithan al Ulum or Al Qutub, as well as the names of some of its directors. But I recently, I came across an author who writes in the 12th century who used another name that better defines the character of this library, this caliphal library, and that makes it comparable to the Abbasid predecessor. Kadeh Ayyad, a well-informed author on the caliphal era, writes in the biography of Abu Bakr ben al-Salim ben al that this Qadi of Cordoba was persuaded by the caliph appealing to his love of science to collate in Kabbalah his books in the Dawawin uh, of his Beit al-Hikmah in return for payment. This mention uh, that had gone almost unnoticed until recently is indeed very relevant because it describes an activity very similar to that carried out in the library of Alexandria as described by Galen. When Kadi Ayyad wrote his dictionary, the denomination Bayt al-Hikmah and Hithanet al-Hikmah, uh, both of them were commonly used uh, to refer to one of the institutions dedicated to preserve knowledge in the Abbasid court of Al-Mamun. So, what was uh, the exact location of the Caliphal libraries, the archive, the Bayt al-Hikmah of al-Hakam? 
There is no doubt that uh, the books that the books were distributed at least between the two main caliphal residences, uh, Madinat al Sahra and the old palace uh, in Cordoba, and probably also in Al Hakam's private palace in, in the city. Brief descriptions of the Easter libraries can be found in Al Mukaddasi, Ibn Sinna, and Makrisi, consisting of corridors, galleries, or rooms full of wooden cabinets and bookshelves, but apparently there was no fixed typology. Some years ago, I proposed to reinterpret, reinterpret a set of buildings with a central courtyard that had been considered so far as administrative and service areas. Two of them have sufficient peculiarities to suggest that they had a more important function, the court of the pillars and the court of the clocks. Their location inside the palace, their architectural structure, four and two porticos respectively, uh, possibly president, president of Madrasa's plan, and the artifacts found inside them, such as fragments of, uh, of sandals, Roman sculptures, and sarcophagi reused as fountains, as well as the absence of domestic materials, all suggest that these were special places, most likely devoted to learning and researching, uh, research activities. The extraordinary set of Roman sarcophagi and small statues busts and her hermite, reused in the 10th century caliphal palace, was hence a conscious act that transcended, transcended, um, trans transcended uh, its polia value. These figures, gods, heroes, philosophers, and muses will only be acceptable in a domain related to the sciences where they the, these images of the philosophers and the heroes of the antiquity will be recognized, recognized as examples due to the illustrated books of sciences and the scholars active in the core. With the end of the caliphate, books, instruments, and scholars were dispersed throughout, throughout the peninsula in search of an environment conducive to science and knowledge. The Cordovan school survived and was very active throughout the 11th century in different kingdoms called Taifas by the chroniclers. According to Forcada, Forcada the scientific act activity in Toledo, Sevilla, Sevilla Zaragoza, fed a great, uh, to a great extent by scholars trained in 10th century Cordoba in mathematics, astronomy, and medicine, reached a high level of excellence coming very close to the philosophical ideal, ideal of Al-Farabi, within the principles of ethics and the ideology of science. Although also, his, uh, also in the uh, Taifa kingdoms, of course, there was a position, opposition to the practice of non-Islamic sciences by the ulama, the Andalusi art and culture in this century reached a great splendor. In the reign of the Banu del Nun in Toledo, mathematics and astronomy flourished, as well as mechanical engineering, botany, and agronomy. Of particular importance were the botanical garden and the astronomical school of King al Mamun, who in so doing emulated the caliphs of Baghdad, from whom he had even taken his lakab, his nickname, al Mamun. The astronomer and historian Said al-Tulatuli, that I mentioned before, led by order of the king a team of astronomers headed by Ibn al-Sarqalu, al-Azarqiel in the Spanish sources, in the Christian sources. They were responsible of the Toledan astronomical tables and created scientific instruments, such as the astrolabe. I show here, here, you can see one of them, um, made by Ibrahim ibn uh, Said al-Sahli al at the end of the, the 11th century, or the Safiya uh, or universal plate invented by Ibn al-Sarqalu. And here there is a, a reproduction, an image 
uh, found in, the, in one of the book of Alphonse X. Uh, also, even Halaf al-Muradi, according to Samso, uh, was uh, the author of an early treatise on mechanical engineering, clepsidras and automata, was also uh, will also be Toledan and in, uh, from the 11th century. Thus, it's, it's not surprising to find in the Arab sources mentions to amazing automata in the royal palace. For this reason also, it is highly possible that the fam famous Pisa Griffin, made in Al-Andalus, as Contadini has proven recently, comes from a Toledan workshop, as Perezigera suggested years ago. In the convent of Santa Fe in Toledo, remains of the Islamic Alcacer have been found. We should hi highlight the fragments of three arches with hunting scenes and fantastic animals made of plaster with polychrome and gild uh, gilded reliefs and glass inlay. The unprecedented use of glass inserted in plaster work, a refined technique of which we have not preserved other examples from that time, denotes the concern not only aesthetic, but scientific, the contact with the rest of the Islamic world and the high technological level reached in this court, only comparable to Cordoba, Cairo, or Samarra. Um, the glass inlay is in, inside the part, inside the, the, the arches. Uh, the palace of al Hafariya in Zaragoza, uh, built by the Banu Hud, the, the lords of this region, this Taifa kingdom, during the last uh, half of the 11th century, was a place limited to the king and his carefully selected circle of boon companions, according to Cynthia Robinson, the place of the matchless activities for contemplating beauty, for improvisation and recitation of poetry. The highly ornamental architecture, made of extravagant combination of interlacing polylobal arches and games of per perspective and spatial, spatial tromblail, analyzed by Christian Ebert, was the materialization of metaphorical poet, uh, poetic language, but also of the mathematical, speculation, mathematical speculations of the court uh, scholars, among them the kings themselves, the reputed mathematicians. Um, those matches also passed to the Christian kingdoms, spaces where the virtue and wisdom of the prince was displayed as studied by Reed Sotha. The second Almohad Caliph, Abu Jacob ben Yusuf, uh, um, stand, and the, in the second half of the 12th century, stands out in the contemporary Arabic sources as a polymath ruler, to the point to, of being compared to al Hakam II. The Almohad chroniclers praise, praise his extraordinary education, his fondness, uh, fondness for astronomy, not for astrology, that was vilified by the Unitarians, and for books. Abdul Wahid al Marrakushi said that this caliph was, uh, had a great knowledge of fiqh, adab, grammar, and he has his high aspirations led him to take an interest in the various branches of philosophy. From these words, it seems to be deduced that Joseph I received an education based on the liberal arts. Following the, tradi the tradition of virtuous princes, Joseph I surrounded himself with an extensive and prestigious corps of physician philosophers, led by Ivan Tufail and Ivan Rushd, with whom he often debated about the eternity of the world, said uh, al Marakushi, and whom he instigate, instigated to comment on the works of Aristotle and the main classical philosophers. We should not forget that the Almohad caliphs, caliphs assumed the heritage of the Umayyad Caliphate of Cordoba, and hence also the pre-Islamic heritage of the region. That could be the meaning of the whole historical catalog 
of capitals and columns reused in the facades of the minaret of the new mosque in uh, Sevilla, now uh, La Giralda, as well as the arrangement of seven Roman pedestals with their inscriptions visible, as you see in the photograph, uh, at the base of the tower. They were not praising the conquest or the victory of Islam over Rome or the enemies, nor the triumph of Islam over paganism, using these pieces, uh, these pieces as magic artifacts or protection, as is often being interpreted. Quite the contrary, in my view. They also composed a continuous and co coherent historical discourse stating the continuity from antiquity to al mohad Caliphate through uh, Umayyad Cordoba. The Egyptian, the Egyptian Ibn Fadl al Umari indicates in his description of the al mohad Palace of Marrakesh that in the courtyard, uh, sorry, in the courtyard near the Garden Gate, Bab al Riyadh, there was a pavilion or Kuba called of the Caliphate, some guest rooms, and the Madrasa, a magnificent building with the library, Al Hisan al Aymiya. The Caliphs, he said, the Caliphs Bani Abd al Mumin used to meet there with the scholars. Luis de Marmor Carvajal and Leon the African also speaks on the mad of the Madrasa, or what was, it le was, was left in the 16th century. <coughs> The madrasa was located in the citadel where the caliphs resided. And I quote, the place where the children of the kings and other principal lords went to read. Um, that's exactly uh, what we know about the school, school inside Madinat al-Sahra or later in the Alhambra, in which there, are, there is a beautiful room, wide and very square with many cupboards he used the, the, uh, the word alacena, that is the Spanish word derived from algizana, around where they put the books. Leon the African agrees with the description and regrets that the garden so beautiful before is now a downhill, a downhill of the city and in several parts of the former library they, they have made chicken poultry. At present, no remains of the al Mohad Palace are known, except for the enclosure of the, cita of the citadel and its Friday mosque, the, the, the Kasbah Mosque. Perhaps the most, uh, the most suggestive fact of those mentioned in the biography of the al Mohad Caliph Yusuf I is that he used to meet to dialogue, uh, to dialogue with Abu Roes, uh, or even Rushd, and with the wise men of the court, probably in his madrasa or his library, as seen in the second makama uh, of Al Hariri. These intellectual gatherings are usually designated as matchless. This was probably also the function of the Sisa Palace in Palermo, in which uh, there are several rooms and cabinets, maybe for the royal Hithana, as well as bookshelves in the walls, as study, we have a study, Juan Carlos and, and, and I um, recently. Sometimes those intellectual gatherings, assemblies, uh, also had practical and applied purposes. There were um, gatherings, for example, between Kiliometros and Albana, um, according to Abdural, from the 10th century, it was customary for uh, artisans to meet with mathematicians to seek advice on certain problems concerning the application of geometry to architecture. This point, this point make, make me uh, think of the mathematical and geometrical boasts present, present in several places in the so-called court in the so-called Court of the Lions of uh, Alhambra, al Riyadh al-Sayyid, built by Muhammad V around uh, 1370. For instance, the 17 plain uh, crystallographic groups um, um, represented in the sillage walls, in the tile, uh, tiling walls, 
that is um, six centuries before Fedorov make the demonstration of these groups uh, in a modern uh, way. Or the use of uh, spherical trigonom trigonometry for designing the two wooden domes covering the two pavilions in the court, or even also the Mukarna's dome. Ruiz Sosa, uh, Juan Carlos Ruiz Sosa published in uh, 2001 an article where he ident identified the Riyadh al Sayyid or Palace of the Lions with a Palatine Madrasa a space for intellectual meetings and teaching, the place where the Nasrid Library was located. In doing so, he wrote for the first time with the romantic 19th century interpretations of the place as the Sultan Harem. Since then, the research team that he and I led until his death just a year ago has delved deeper into this subject of the spaces of knowledge. Other data supporting this, uh, this identification have been suggested in this conference. Let's add something else. In one of the most extensive poems of the whole of the two sisters, the whole calls itself a garden, a sublime, a sublime palace, metaphorically mentions the songs of the sultans, and claims to be a spacious, a spacious meeting place, Nadia using a word uh, that alludes to a circle, assembly, or a study group, analogous to matchless. I would like to finish with an unpublished, an unpublished uh, image. The last scientific undertaking of our project, our research project. A century later, between 1460 and 1497, the vault that covered the first library of the University of Salamanca was painted. The chair of astronomy had just been founded in 1460, and perhaps that is why it was, it was chosen to represent a celestial vault with the 12 zodiacal uh, signs, the sun, the moon, and the five planets known at that time something exceptional at that period. For this reason, it is popularly named the sky of Salamanca. It is an unprecedented pictorial work in Spanish art attributed to Fernando Gallego, but above all, it's a sample of erudition to cover a space of science and study, the library of the university. Its virtual reconstruction had been possible thanks to Miguel Sobrino, the artist, and Azucena Hernandez, member of our research team, who has identified the date represented on the composition and therefore the arrangement of the figures in the lowest part of the vault. Without the, pre the precedence of spaces of knowledge of, in Islam that we have exposed today, this exceptional work will have been more difficult to explain. Thank you very much. <laughs>